While there are plenty of YouTube videos on surface grinders and their use, cylindrical grinders seem pretty uncommon in the home shop, so we thought we'd give you all a closer look at one. Just before we start, Tuesday I'm going to do the next Patreon live stream, and it's about abandoning projects. My mate Franz comes from a farming family. He owns the extensive old farm buildings. Although an engineer, he retains the farmer's habit of never discarding anything. Do you still own your first car? Franz does. Do you still have your first tractor? He does. So do you still own your first motorbike? I think you get the point. Yeah, he's done some lovely restorations in his day. Especially the Horax is uh, pretty rare. Franz has got a special soft spot for machine tools from Austria, like this A. Roncel drill press. I'm not sure how many of them he's got. I've only got one so far. Having a lot of space like this is a real asset if you're a hoarder. Whenever he gets a machine, he tends to overhaul it, but also to collect all of the associated accessories and tooling. After he got this Toss tool and cutter grinder, he sold me the Clarkson. As with many engineers, Franz has been attracted to ever-increasing precision, with this surface grinder project nearing completion. Franz recently let me know that another machine had taken up residence in his shop, Toss Model 28 Cylindrical Grinder. Toss was the industrial conglomerate of the various machine tool manufacturers of Czechoslovakia. This grinder was made in the Melnik plant about a half an hour north of Prague in 1991. What a surface grinder is to a mill, the cylindrical grinder is to the lathe. Its main use is to grind precise, highly round features onto a shaft, such as bearings, journal, shoulders, and tapers. And with additional accessories, internal grinding can also be performed. In this case, we've got a 1920s Indian big end journal. Yeah, so this TOS Model 28 was built in 1991 and delivered to a school. It does not appear to have worked very hard. So when Franz first got it, he gave it a thorough cleanup because mostly it was still covered with the preservation grease. The x-axis reciprocation wasn't working. So Franz had to break down all of the hydraulic components and clean them. And he eventually found this little chip stuck in one of the valves of the reciprocating mechanism. So this is a metric machine, which uh, can be adjusted in microns or thousandth of a millimeter for diameter. This is hydraulically controlled in both axes with highly automated grinding cycles. So you set up your cycle in advance through the stops, through setting of the hand wheels, also through the adjustment of a bunch of hydraulic control components, and then activate it through a bunch of push buttons. Part of the machine is this grinding spindle with its 400 millimeter grinding wheels. The grinding spindle is in preloaded plain bearings in rest position. You can't turn it. It's so heavily preloaded that the wheel has a 12 newton meter breakout force before it starts rotating. Spindle bearings have their own recirculating oil pressurized lubrication system, so it's important to check for bearing oil flow on startup. The whole thing's driven by a big three phase motor through belts and offers two different grinding head speeds. That whole grinding head can be rotated up to 45 degrees to allow steep tapers to be ground. The grinder spindle is mounted on its own slideway, allowing the grinding head to automatically approach the work and to retract at the end of the grinding cycle. It appears that the school might have simply bought the wrong machine. This is not sort of a training machine. Given that the original grinding disc was still installed and its diameter had only worn by 12 millimeters, it seems like the machine had a table travel problem. No one fixed it, so after that the machine just sat unused for years. This is the photo of the internal grinding attachment. That's the main accessory which uh, Franz is still missing. So if you, any of you have any idea of where one of those internal grinding attachments is, Please let us know, get in contact, and uh, that'd be nice to complete this machine. You can see how the wheels are balanced simply by moving these four weights around so that it will stop in any position rather than always falling to the same position. Because of the huge diameter of these grinding wheels, Franz has had to pack up his balancing jig on the surface plate on a couple of uh, spaces. So if you know of anybody who's got a balancing jig designed for 400 diameter grinding wheels, also, please let us know. Franz is interested. The grinder's reciprocating ways are inverted V-ways, which is typical for a grinder. They're still in very nice condition. 
the entire table is split horizontally to allow the top portion to be rotated to an angle up to a bit over 8 degrees. This freedom to 8 degrees is very helpful because it allows you to do up to 30, 40, 50 taper tooling without offsetting the head. The final diameter is set on this wheel and then the, the increments are set with this wheel. So it automatically increments on each pass. This is the coarse increment. Once it gets close to zero, it switches to fine increments and basically sparks out the piece and then automatically, automatically shuts down. And resets, ready for the next part. And coming over the side, the final fine setting in microns is done with this wheel. The coolant systems, this tank over the back, pipe runs up to the grinding head. That small green tank is not the original. This big one is the original tank, but it takes so much coolant it's kind of a pain for the home shop. The part to be ground is typically mounted between centers and driven off a drive dog from this powered headstock to rotate the work. It allows the part rotation to be either with the wheel or against the wheel. That powered headstock can be rotated up to 90 degrees to allow you to do face grinding. Once set up, the tailstock can be opened and closed hydraulically through a foot switch for changing parts. There's a diamond attached to the tailstock for wheel dressing. To true the wheel is a special speed and setting. It's adjusted here. The machine's set up for the 400 volts, which is typical in, in Europe, and can draw about 9.5 amps. The original design would have had screw in fuses, but this one was uh, switched over to circuit breakers before it was delivered. As you can see, it's got a fair number of relays and a big transformer. Very nice. Franz let me record all of the footage for this video a couple of weeks ago because my wife and I went to the States to visit some very dear old friends of ours. If you're ever in Southern California, the Craftsmanship Museum is only about three quarters of an hour north of San Diego in Carlsbad. I've followed uh, Joe Martin's Internet Craftsmanship Museum website back since the early 2000s and I remember when he declared Young Park to Craftsman of the Year in 2002 for these incredible models. It was great to finally see them for real. Oh wow, the Edwards Radial 5. This was an engine I was originally intending to build. I got the plans for it and I think I even got as far as buying some material to make it. I'd like to give a special thank you to Myram for his welcome to the museum and a nice tour through the exhibits. And also to Dave in the machine shop for a bit of a tour of there as well. Thanks very much. It's an amazing, uh, amazing place. And I really appreciate you guys' efforts to keep Joe Martin's uh, vision alive. And look at this. Mark Pressling's Titan 60 is on display, pride of place, very close to the entrance to the museum. Good one, Mark. If you're ever down here in Southern California, you've got to come and see this. It's just fantastic. Anyway, back to the grinder. Let's see what it does. But here you can see that Franz is working on a set of uh, arbors for the internal grinding head of his TOS tool and cutter grinder. These are originals and this is the set that's getting made. So let's grind one. Put a bit of oil in. Nicht ganz sauber geworden, oder? After blowing up the spindle, it needs a slight angle adjustment. And luckily, it's set up 
to be able to make fine angular adjustments. So there you have it guys, another machine you've probably never really thought much about, but now desperately need. I'd like to say a big thank you to my mate Franz for letting me showcase this lovely machine. Also thanks to this old Tony for the use of his surface grinder clips. And thank you a lot for watching. I'll leave you with some footage of Franz grinding a big taper on a shaft for one of his tractors.